In this lesson, we are finishing off State Standard 2. We have already covered most of it uh, back in Chapter 3. Remember, I hope you remember solving systems of linear equations. Uh, we used substitution method. We graphed the two variables, two equations on the same line, found out if they intersected, were parallel, or were the same line. We graphed inequalities and shaded in one side or the other. We graded, uh, graphed a system of inequalities and decided where the two overlap um, in the regions we shade in. And so we're finishing out standard two today by solving using matrices. And involved in using matrices is something called Kramer's rule. So Kramer's rule is what we're going to use. We're going to calculate some determinants um, because we're going to have some create some square matrices. We know only a square matrix has a determinant. And so here's what it looks like. In today's lesson, we're going to start with two equations and two variables. And I would say the first thing we need to do before we even learn Kramer's rule is to line up our system of equations this way. Okay, we want some coefficient of x plus some coefficient of y equals some constant. And then our second equation we want in standard form also something coefficient of x, some coefficient of y equals some constant. And we're going to create three of these two by two matrices to help us solve using Kramer's rule. One matrix will represent a denominator. A second matrix will represent the numerator of x and the third matrix will represent the numerator of y. And so here's how we get those three different matrices. Now, most books, most teachers don't have the subscript. I'm going to cover it over here with the little hand icon. Um, just have capital D for the determinant. I like to use a subscript D so we remember it's the denominator. Uh, many books might call this the coefficient matrix because essentially we're going to take the coefficients of x after all, we did line these up in standard form. Coefficients of x will have a and d, put that in the first column. And then we'll take our coefficients of y, b and e, put that in the second column. And then we'll calculate that determinant, and that'll tell us the denominator. When we are looking for the numerator of x, we're going to replace the x coefficients with the constants. And that's why I did them in another color, so it would stand out. So the first column, which represented my x coefficients, are going to be the constant c and f. We'll keep the y coefficients, and we'll calculate the determinant of that. And then our third matrix will be representing the numerator of y. So we'll have to replace the y coefficients, which if you remember were b and e, with those constants c and f, keep the x coefficients, calculate that determinant, and that'll tell us the numerator of y. And we're going to put that all together to get our answer in this format. Whatever we get for the numerator of x, the cf, replace the x coefficients with the constants, over the determinant of the denominator, again this is also called the coefficient matrix, because it's the matrix that has all the coefficients of our system, not the constants. And that will give us the x value. To find the y value of our ordered pair, we will take the determinant of the numerator of y over the determinant of the denominator, or our coefficient matrix. So let's look at a couple examples, see what we can work out. And again, first thing you should check, make sure everything's in standard form. We've got something x plus something y plus or minus something y equals some constant. And then our second equation is lined up underneath it in the same fashion. Let's create our three matrices, our denominator. We're going to take the coefficients of x, 2 and 4, and the coefficients of y, including any negative signs, so 5 and negative 2. Let's go ahead and find that determinant. If you remember, we're going to multiply the diagonal going down. So 2 times negative 2. And then we're going to subtract the diagonal product of the diagonal going up. So again, the product of the diagonal going down, major axis, minus the product of the diagonal going up, minor axis. So that's 2 times negative 2 minus 4 times 5. Let's simplify that. 2 times negative 2 is negative 4. 4 times 5 is 20, 
and negative 4 minus 20 is negative 24. So that's our denominator so far. Let's find the numerator of x. We are going to replace the x coefficients, the 2 and the 4, with the constants, the 7 and the negative 3. Leave the rest of that matrix unchanged. And then we go ahead and multiply the product of the diagonal going down, 7 times negative 2, minus the product of the diagonal going up, so the major axis minus the minor diagonal. And that's uh, 7 times negative 2, diagonal going down, minus negative 3 times 5, product of the diagonal going up. 7 times negative 2 is negative 14. And then we have a negative 15, but we're subtracting a negative 15, so that becomes a positive 15. And negative 14 plus 15 is 1. That's my numerator of x. To find the numerator of y, we are going to replace the y coefficients, the 5 and the negative 2, with the constants 7 and negative 3. Let's find the determinant of that numerator. So 2 times negative 3 minus 4 times 7, which is negative 6, minus 28, which is negative 34. So we have the parts, the components, so to speak. Our denominator is negative 24. Our numerator of x is 1. Numerator of y is negative 34. So what we need to do is put them all together to get our solution of x and y. So to put them together, we have x is the determinant of the numerator of x. So let's scroll back up. Now, you're saying this is a positive 1. Why are we writing negative in the numerator? Well, my denominator, recall, was a negative 24. And us mathematicians, we don't like to leave negatives in the denominator. So we multiply both numerator and denominator by negative 1. And that makes it negative 1 over positive 24. And then the numerator of x was negative 34 over my original denominator, which was negative 24. And that reduces to 17 twelfths. And our ordered pair, x is negative 1 24th, y is 17 twelfths. If you recall back to chapter 3, there is a solution. So the vocabulary word we use is consistent. And these, if you graph these two equations, they would intersect at one point. So they are independent. So again, if we had graphed these two on the same x and y axis, they would intersect at one point. But it would be kind of tough to get exactly where they intersect, since they would be intersecting at negative 1 24th, and then 17 twelfths, or 1 and 5 twelfths. So Kramer's rule, and using matrices, has some advantages. Also, if we were using the substitution method, Imagine finding that x is negative 1 24th, and for all you fraction lovers out there, you would replace x with negative 1 24th to find out what y is. So essentially, in Kramer's rule, you see that our calculation so far did not involve any fractions until we put the components together at the end, and all we had to do was reduce a fraction. We weren't using any really calculations with fractions. All right, let's look at one more example. We have the system of equations 2x minus y equals 6, and we have 3x plus 5y equals 22. We're going to need three matrices. We'll need the coefficient matrix, which is the matrix that represents our denominator. So we take the coefficients of x, 2 and 3, put them in the first column. Coefficients of y, including any negative signs, so negative 1 and positive 5. Let's calculate that. Product of the diagonal going down, 2 times 5, minus the product of the diagonal going up, 3 times negative 1. 2 times 5 is 10. 3 times negative 1 is negative 3, but we're subtracting a negative 3, so that becomes a positive 3. So 13 is our denominator. Let's find the numerator of x. Recall we are going to replace the coefficients of x, 2 and 3, with the constants, and I'm hoping that the color coding is going to be able to visually enhance this. So we're going to replace the 2 and 3 coefficients of x with the constants 6 and 22. 
Let's find the determinant of the matrix who will give us the numerator of x. So multiply the product of the diagonal going down, 6 times 5. Subtract the product of the diagonal going up, so 22 times negative 1. 6 times 5 is 30. 22 times negative 1 is negative 22, but we're subtracting a negative 22, so that becomes a plus 22, and 30 plus 22 is 52. All right, the numerator of y. We are going to replace the y coefficients, the negative 1 and the positive 5, with the constants 6 and 22. So let's go ahead and find that determinant. The product of the diagonal going down, 2 times 22, minus the product of the diagonal going up, 3 times 6. Let's simplify those. 2 times 22 is 44. 3 times 6 is 18, and 44 minus 18 is 26. So we have all the components. We just need to put them together. So x, we're going to take my numerator of x, 52, over the denominator, 13. 52 divided by 13 is 4. And then to find the y portion of my answer, we're going to take the y coefficients, or the determinant from the numerator of y, which is 26, put that over our denominator found from that coefficient matrix, which is 13. Simplify that. 26 divided by 13 is 2. And that gives us the ordered pair for 2, which these numbers are a little nicer than the first example. So if you had graphed both of these equations on the same x and y at coordinate axis, they would intersect at the point 4, 2. And again, if you recall our vocabulary, there is a solution, so we say it's consistent. And the solution is one point, so we say it's independent. And that raises the question, how would you know using Kramer's rule when the system is inconsistent, meaning that there was no solution, and our visual for that back from chapter 3 we graph the two equations on the same coordinate plane, and they were parallel. So they never intersected, nothing in common. Or we're dependent, meaning we graph the two equations, and one line was exactly on top of the other. They were the same line. Well, here's how you would find that. If you were using Kramer's rule, and the denominator turned out to be 0, and the numerator of y was not 0, that means these two equations would have graphs that are parallel. They would never intersect, had never have anything in common. And we say that there is no solution or it is inconsistent. So that system of equations would be inconsistent. So again, denominator is 0. Numerator of y is not 0. Now what about the other option? If my denominator is 0, and my numerator of y is 0, the equations are consistent, there is a solution, but they're dependent, which means the graphs are the exact same line. So there's an infinite number of solutions, and those solutions would be all the points that are on the graph. Now I know the last example wasn't that case, but if this had come out to be a dependent uh, system, then you would just take one of these equations, and depending on which textbook or which uh, teacher you had, you would either write your answer in um, standard form or slope-intercept form, and that would be your solution, again, recalling that from Chapter 3, of how you represent the answer when there are an infinite number of answers when the two lines are dependent. All right, so we know that you can't divide by 0, so that's going to bring up some cases here. Again, denominator is 0, numerator of y is not. They are parallel lines with the same slope, no solution, inconsistent. Denominator is 0, numerator of y is 0. They are the same line, and we say consistent dependent. All right, so again, today's goal and objective was we were doing state standard 2, finishing it off. Uh, for two equations, two variables, next episode will involve three equations, three variables, using Kramer's rule and matrices to find their solution.